right? Second Chronicles 18, let's call this one Jehoshaphat made peace because in this chapter, Jehoshaphat is in fact going to make peace with Ahab through a marriage alliance as we referenced briefly in the last chapter. But we're going to see in a little bit more detail the ways in which that peace is going to come at a high cost. It's going to be pretty high now, but it's going to get even worse in Jehoshaphat's later generations. But first things first, after being established as a king of great riches and honor, Jehoshaphat is not simply going to sit on his laurels. He is going to go make peace with Ahab now that he's got a little bit of clout. And Ahab is going to be open to that peace, as we mentioned, entering into a marriage alliance with uh, the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat. And so as they enter into that marriage alliance, uh, a lot of times contracts or alliances, they come with some conditions. And so now that we're buddies, Ahab has a question for Jehoshaphat. Hey, you want to go to war with me? And as we mentioned, since this is a retelling of this story, Jehoshaphat, in my reinterpretation, is going to be like, uh, no, not really. But <laughs> because he is trying to keep the peace with a notoriously volatile man, his answer is going to be, yes, yeah, my army is your army. However, he's going to say, we need to inquire of God first. We've got to at least do that. And so as we saw at the end of 1 Kings, they are going to inquire of God, but the prophets that they call aren't going to be very persuasive. And so Jehoshaphat is going to be like, there has to be somebody else. Ahab is going to be like, yeah, there is. There's this guy named Micaiah, but I don't like him because he never prophesies anything good about me. And Jehoshaphat's going to be like, look, if it's the truth, it's the truth. Once again, my paraphrase, but he's going to say, call him in because we need to hear from him. These guys, I'm not sure about. And so they call Micaiah in. And ironically enough, Micaiah is going to say the same thing as Ahab's prophets, which is going to actually throw Ahab into a rage because he is going to uh, seem to have a pretty good indication that Micaiah is not telling him the truth. And so he's going to pretend that he's super interested in the truth uh, by making this big demonstration of saying, how many times have I told you to tell me nothing but the truth, which is an interesting uh, statement because as Micaiah begins to tell him the truth, I saw the army scattered and them having no king, an indication that Ahab wasn't going to make it back from the battle. That, of course, is going to throw Ahab into a larger rage, and he is going to then throw Micaiah into jail on meager rations of bread and water. And this time, what we want to focus on, now that we've gotten a chance to see the mass exodus or uh, the desertion from Israel to Judah, as God began to bless Judah's success as a nation that had begun to seek its prosperity in a way that promoted peace with its neighbors, as opposed to seeking its peace at the expense of its neighbors, uh, now we're getting to see how Jehoshaphat is getting a first-hand view of why people might have made that mass exodus from the northern ten tribes of Israel into Judah. As we see this man, Micaiah, put in the catch-22 of not being able to appease Ahab by telling him what he wants to hear, but being thrown in prison for telling him the truth. And so if it wasn't clear to Jehoshaphat before, he probably should now be terrified at having entered into a marriage alliance with Ahab. And if he's wise, he is going to try to create as much, as we mentioned before, distance as possible, even though he is now married into Ahab's family. Why? Because before the end of the chapter, this venture out into battle is almost going to get Jehoshaphat killed, and he is going to barely escape with his life. As we see in the next chapter, he will make it back to Judah. Uh, another one of my paraphrases, staggering in from the close call or the brush that he had with death. But even though, as we'll see in chapter 18, that Jehoshaphat escaped with his life and that at the end of this chapter, Ahab did not, uh, Ahab's influence is going to be so substantial that it is going to outlive him. Jehoshaphat, on the other hand, by having entered into a marriage alliance with Ahab, is going to have an influence that functionally dies with him because within roughly three generations, one of Ahab's relatives will actually have taken over the throne of Judah helping us understand, even in modern times, something that we are still warned about to this day, and that is the danger of trying to marry into a situation under the assumption you can change the fundamental character of the person you'll be married to.